Hi, and welcome to another episode of McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy, and today we're going to be talking about solving simultaneous equations using the substitution method. Now, I'm presuming that you already know how to transpose formulae, and if you're not sure how, I've already created a video on that. Go and watch it. I'm going to be creating another video later on how to use the elimination method, but this one precedes that one, so stay tuned for that. If you have any questions, you can contact me on mcclutchymaths at yahoo.com. And my shout out today goes to Kwang, who has requested this video. This video is appropriate for grade 10 and grade 11, um, and also any year 9 students who are looking for a little bit of extension. So let's have a bit of a recap on equations. An equation uses a combination of letters, which are pronumerals, and numbers, which are coefficients or could be whole numbers. An equation is a statement of equivalence. That's why we have an equal sign. Some examples of equations are x equals 3, which has one variable. We know it is what it is worth. y plus 2 equals 3, take away y. And we would need to change that formula around in order to find the value of y. And also a third equation could also be 3x plus 2y equals 6, and that has two variables. When we add something to the side of an equation, we have to add it to the other side. So if you think of balancing scales, when I add something to this side of the scale, the scale's going to go down and this side will go up. So I've got to add the same amount to that side to keep them in balance. And that's really important when we're dealing with equations. We always want to keep them in balance. So anything we do in terms of operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying or dividing to either side of the equation has to be done to both sides to keep that equation equal and true. Now, when we have an equation with one variable, that is one letter, we can easily solve that to find the value of that letter. So in this example here, we've got y plus 2 equals 3 take away y. To solve that, we simply transpose the equation and make y the subject. But when we have two variables, we need more information than just one equation to find the value of x and y. We actually need two equations that we solve at the same time or side by side, which is what simultaneous means to give us that extra information. So let's look at a worked example. I've got two equations, y equals 3x plus 2 and y equals 4x plus 1. So my first step is I'm going to write those equations underneath one another and name them. I've got equation 1 and equation 2. And the reason I do this is it just makes it easier for me to see which equation I should work with first. It makes it easier if I want to use, for example, the elimination method to work out what I need to do. But later on in another video, we'll talk about that. Step two, I know in this particular instance that y is equal to two things. Firstly, it's equal to 3x plus 2, y is also equal to 4x plus 1. So if something is equal to this and it's equal to that, then I have to assume that this and that are also equal. So I've made this statement here, 3x plus 2 equals y, which also equals 4x plus 1. So let's get rid of the middleman y. We've now got 3x plus 2 equals 4x plus 1. My third step is now I've only got one variable, x. I can solve it. So let's do that. 3x plus 2 equals 4x plus 1. If I subtract 3x from both sides, I'm left with 2 equals x plus 1. Now if I subtract 1 from both sides, I'm going to be left with x equals 1. So now I've solved half of the problem. Now that I know the value of x, I can use that information to find, find y. I'm going to simply substitute x equals 1 into either of the equations. Let's choose the equation with the easiest numbers. And I've decided to use equation 2. It really doesn't matter which one, and it's all up to you. So I know that x equals 1. Everywhere I see the letter x, I'm going to change it to a 1. So now I'm going to have y equals 4 times 1 plus 1, which is going to give me y equals 2, 5. Now, because x equals 1 is higher up, and sometimes there could be multiple lines of working between x and y, it's really important that you bring it together at the end and write it as a statement. Therefore, x equals 1, comma, y equals 5. That's a really good communication step that your teacher is going to appreciate, and sometimes award half a mark too. Now, the other thing that's important to do is to check your work. So what I mean by that is if I look at equation 1, x should equal 1 and y should equal 5. Let's try that. y equals 5 equals 3 times 1 plus 2. Yes, 5 equals 5. 
It should also be the same for equation two. And we've already substituted that information into equation two, so we know that to be true. So it's a really good idea to check your work and make sure that what you found is true for both of the equations. Let's try with a slightly harder example. In this case, I've got y equals 4x minus 2 and 2y equals 3x plus 10. I'm going to write one on top of the other just like I did last time and name the equations 1 and equation 2. Now, if you remember the last time that we looked at an example, y was equal to this and y was equal to that. So we could just make this and that equal to each other. But this time, y is only by itself or the subject in only one of the equations. So we know that y is equal to 4x minus 2. So if we take that information of what we know about y, we can substitute that into the other equation. And it's important that we tell our teacher what we're doing here. Notice in white italics it's written, substitute equation 1 into equation 2. And we always take the equation where we've got a letter as a subject, and that's the one we're going to substitute into the other equation. So now in equation 2, Everywhere I see the letter Y, I'm going to write 4X minus 2. And it's a good idea to use brackets wherever you see the Y to change it to 4X minus 2 because we're going to be multiplying 2 by this. Now, that might seem pretty straightforward, but if 2, for example, was a negative number, we'd be multiplying a negative by a negative. And that's why the brackets are a really handy tool to remind us what we're doing. So now I'm going to expand those brackets and I end up with 8x take away 4 on the left hand side of the equation equals 3x plus 10. My next step is to subtract 3x from both sides. And then lastly to add 4 to both sides and divide both sides by 5. And I end up with a fraction x equals 14 on 5. Do not be tempted to pull out your calculator and change that to a decimal number. Keep it as a fraction. Your teacher will be very grateful and probably won't mark you down. So now I know the value of my x variable. I can substitute that into either of the equations and find the value of y. And it's probably the easiest to substitute that back into equation 1 because y is the subject. So very little transposing to do here. So I'm going to multiply. Every time I see the letter x, I'm going to put in a 14 fifths. So 4 times 14 fifths take away 2. Now if I evaluate that in the calculator, 4 lots of 14 is 56. And 56 is going to be over 5. Don't put that in the calculator and change it to a decimal. And that's going to be 2 subtracted there. Okay. Next step. I'm going to change that into a mixed number and that will make it easier for me to subtract the 2. So notice that 56 fifths becomes 11 and a fifth. Next I'm going to do 11, take away 2 which gives me 9. I'm simplifying this and now I've got 9 and 1 fifth. Okay, so now I've got the value of x variable and the value of the y variable. Let's bring them together and write a statement. And I've changed that 9 fifths back into an improper fraction. And the reason why is because it's always good to present them both in the same form to your teacher. So I could have presented them both as mixed numbers or both as improper proper fractions, but good idea not to have them as two different things. Also really important that we substitute those back into the equations and check our work again. Now we're nearly done, but I do have one more example I'd like to show you, and this is an example using a worded problem. There's a few extra steps that we need to be aware of. So in this particular example, I've got the sum of two numbers is 48, and the larger number is 14 more than the smaller number. What are the two numbers? So the first thing I want to do is allocate a letter to each of the variables and write a statement to communicate to the teacher or the person reading your work what you've allocated. So I've got two numbers. I'm going to give one a letter and the other a letter. So what you're going to write is let the smaller number be A, or you could have chosen any letter of the alphabet, and let the larger number be B. Step two, you're going to change that information that's in the question into two equations using those two letters you've chosen. And you're going to number those two equations. So reading the questions, the sum of two numbers. Sum gives me a clue. Plus. So those two numbers, A plus B, that I created is going to come to 48. That's how I've got my first equation. The larger number is 14 more. So 14 more tells me plus 14. Well, 14 more than the small number gives me the big number. So smaller number is A. A plus 14 is going to be equal to B. So now we can start to do solving the equation. Now notice equation 2 has B as the subject. 
That's because we want one of the variables to have itself as a subject so we can substitute that back into the other equation. If we had a case where we knew that um, A plus B was 48 and then A take away B was another number, we'd have to rearrange one of the equations to make a subject for us to substitute into the other equation. But thankfully, we've got that step done for us. So we're going to substitute equation 2 into equation 1. Notice again I've written this in white italics because you're going to write that down on the paper to communicate to your teacher what you're doing. You do need to use some words with algebra. Okay, so now everywhere in equation 1 that I see the letter B, I'm going to write A plus 14. Notice I've put that in brackets to show you where B was sitting. We're going to collect those like terms now. We've got A plus A gives me 2A plus 14 on the left-hand side equals 48. 2a equals 34. We've subtracted 14 from both sides and now we're going to divide both sides by 2 to find that a is equal to 17. Hey, we've found the smaller number. Now it's time to find the larger number. So we've got our two equations again. We're going to substitute a is 17 into any of those equations. We're going to choose the easy one. I've chosen equation 2. So we're going to solve that to find that larger number b. So 17 plus 14 is equal to b. B is 31, but I'm still not finished. I need to write a statement. This is really important, especially with worded problems, because I don't see anywhere in that worded problem the letter A or the letter B sitting by itself. So we need to now go back and write our statement to tell the teacher or the person reading our paper what the smaller number is and what the larger number is. The smaller number is 17, the larger number is 31. And then we should check our work. So what I should do is just do a quick check to make sure that two numbers added together, 17 plus 14, gives me 48. I should also make a check to make sure that um, when I add those two numbers, would add 14 to one of those numbers, I get the right answer. Thanks so much for listening today. I hope that's been helpful for you. My name is Natalie McClutchy and you've been watching McClutchy Maths. Thank you.